Hello, welcome to another solution to the Calculus 2 final exam review guide. If you'd like to download the review guide, there is a link in the description below. If you want to see a detailed written solutions to any of the questions from the review guide, there is a link to that as well. If you want more final exam practice, lecture notes, solutions, etc., open up your favorite browser, type in brianveach.com, click your course, and scroll down. You'll see all of my practice exams, old finals, solutions, and if you scroll up a little bit more, you'll have all my lecture notes. Now with that said, let's get started. Find the exact area of the surface obtained by rotating the curve y equals root 5 minus x from 3 to 5 about the x-axis. So for me, the easiest way of approaching this problem is to actually try to graph the solid so I'm going to go ahead and graph y equals five mi root 5 minus x. So here's the graph of just root x. I'm going to have to rewrite it so that I can do the transformations on it. You can see that x right there means reflect over the y-axis, and the minus 5 means shift right 5 units. Now what I'm going to do is restrict the domain so that it's from 3 to 5. And then I'm going to do my rotation about the x-axis. And then I'm going to actually create the solid by making it look three-dimensional and draw a typical washer. Now I do this so that I can identify the radius. In this case the radius is y. And with that I have two formulas that I can use. Each one uh, almost identical except that one has dy dx, the other one has dx dy. You can see the difference here. But both of them have y in this one place because that's going to represent the radius. Alright, let's go ahead and evaluate the integral. Uh, we'll start with the integral and the bounds. So we're going to have the integral from 3 to 5, because we're in terms of x. So 2 pi. Now, because we're in terms of x, y is going to have to be written as root 5 minus x, because that's what y equals. Then 1 plus, and then the derivative of y, which I put up in the top right here, but it's negative 1 over 2 root 5 minus x. Remember to square it. And dx, and that's going to be the integral from 3 to 5 of 2 pi root 5 minus x, and then I'm going to go ahead and simplify that a little bit by squaring the fraction to get positive 1 over 4, 5 minus x, dx. That's going to equal the integral from 3 to 5. Now what I'm going to do is multiply the two square roots together, so they're going to get 5 minus x in the first term, and then the 5 minus x is canceled to get 1 fourth. It's going to be the integral from 3 to 5, of 2 pi, root, and then 21 over 4 minus x after I simplify it. Now this is a substitution, so I'm going to have to let u equal 21 over 4 minus x. And du is going to be negative dx. I'm going to bring the negative 1 over to the left-hand side. I'm going to have to change the bounds, so that's going to be if x equals 5, then u is going to equal 21 over 4 minus 5, which is 1 fourth. If x equals 3, then u is going to equal 21 over 4 minus 3, and that's going to be 9 fourths. After the substitution, you're going to get the integral from 9 fourths to 1 fourth of negative 2 pi root u, du. I'm going to rewrite it so that it's going to be u to the positive 1 half. And then take the antiderivative, that's going to give me negative 4 thirds u to the 3 halves, evaluated from 9 fourths to 1 fourth. Now I know that I forgot the pi right here. So I'm going to bring that back in. But right now I'm evaluating at the bounds. When I do that, I'm going to get 13 thirds. But then I remember to throw in the pi right here. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and throw the pi in back up top just so I know my work is correct. All right, pi goes here, and then here, and here. All right, so this is doing it one way. Okay, now we're going to do it with the other version of the formula, where we're in terms of y. Now we're going to start off with the integral from 0 to, now the top bound is not explicitly written. We have to figure that out by plugging in 3 into the function to get root 2. So the top bound is root 2. Now we're going to have 2 pi y. And what's nice about this is that I just get to keep y, because I'm in terms of y. That's going to be the square root of 1 plus, now what's dx dy? That's the derivative of the function when it's in terms of y, so I still I have to rewrite the function to be in terms of y, meaning solve for x. So I'm going to get x equals 5 minus y squared. And when I take the derivative, dx dy is going to be negative 2y. 
I'm going to throw that right here. And I'm going to end it with the dy. That's going to be the integral from 0 to root 2 of 2 pi y. And then that's 1 plus 4y squared dy. Now this is going to be a substitution again. So I'm going to let u equal 1 plus 4y squared. And then du is going to be 8y dy. I'm going to divide the 8 over to get 1 8 du equals y dy. I'm going to have to change the bounds. So if x equals root 2, then u is going to equal 1 plus 4 times root 2 squared, which is 9. If x equals 0, then u is going to be 1 plus 4 0 squared, so that's 1. Plugging everything in, we're going to get the integral from 1 to 9 of 2 pi over 8 root u. Simplify that a little bit and get pi over 4. And then now instead of u to the root u, I get u to the half. Antiderivative is going to be pi over 6, u to the 3 halves, evaluated from 1 to 9. I'm going to plug in 9, minus, and then plug in 1. And that's going to be 13 thirds pi.